This is the pellet smashing injector, which is by far my favorite name for a high-tech piece of scientific gear. And this is part of the safety protocol for uh, Eater. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, tell me, what can we expect from Eater? So Eater, which means the way in Latin, was designed and now is being assembled, first and foremost, so that we can understand the physics behind a self-sustained plasma, what we call a burning plasma. So you heat that plasma up, but then you don't want to have to keep having external heating. You want it to be self-sustaining. Okay, so I know that plasma's really hot, and this is meant to cool it down. So explain to me how this works. So the shattered pellet injector actually is used to dissipate the heat from the plasma. So ITER is first and foremost an experiment. And in an experiment, you have to be prepared for things not operating quite the way that they'll need to ultimately in a commercial plant. This is actually what the fuel pellet looks like in terms of size and shape. And the way that this test stand works, and this will be similar to how it works in ITER, we form the pellets here. And the way we do that is we've got liquid helium, so about four degrees Kelvin, which is minus 269 degrees centigrade. And we use a process called desublimation. So we're basically turning a gas into a solid, very, very cold. Think You can think about freezing. Mm -hmm. That's done in this section right here. Now in ITER, those pellets will be there in the system already ready to go. Okay. We use gas to push the pellet into this section and we've got all of this instrumented with cameras so that we'll be able to see what happens because how this pellet shatters is key to the experiment. In this section here and this section here, we're pulling the gas off that you used to push the pellet through because all you want to go into the plasma is the pellet itself because the gas will actually cause us to lose confinement of the plasma and we don't want to do that. Then the pellet comes into this section and, and this is what simulates the tokamak inside of the tokamak. Okay. And then we want to understand again how this pellet shatters so that it, we can make sure that it will uniformly dissipate the heat. And I guess that's the same sort of theory as uh, take a hot cup of tea and you drop an ice cube in it. It'll cool it down, but it takes a while. But if you dumped a bunch of crushed ice into it, it cools it down much more quickly. That's right. And it's not just the much more quickly. It's also the uniformity of cooling. It's much better when you've got those different pieces. Okay, now, I know that just one of these injectors is not going to be enough to cool down that kind of a reaction. How many of these injectors will be positioned around the tokamak? So ITER will have 27 shattered pellet injectors, 24 of them around the circumference, and then three from uh, up on top. And how, exactly how will the, the cooling action take place? So what happens is these shattered pellet injectors will fire basically simultaneously. They'll fire their pellets into the very hot plasma. And how do you make sure that they all fire off at the same time? So we can do that via sending an electronic signal. And the reason why we need to have it happen basically simultaneously is the plasma will cool very, very quickly. We're talking on the order of milliseconds. Wow. And you don't want one side to cool before the other side. You want to uniformly dissipate the heat and it will dissipate quickly. Okay, so we're going from really high temperatures to really low temperatures. What kind of temperatures are we actually talking about? So think about the temperature of the center of the sun, which is 15 million degrees centigrade. The plasma is actually 10 times hotter than that. That's 150 million degrees. How do you even know you can do that? It's been done in laboratories already. Our challenge here is to do it for longer periods of time. That's one of the big challenges. Okay, now when ITER goes online, which is around the mid 2020s, around 2025, um, what can we expect? So in the mid-2020s, in what's called first plasma, that's where we'll demonstrate an integrated operation of these major systems. We've got superconducting magnets. We've got the system that keeps the superconducting magnets cold. We have this large vacuum vessel. All of this at plant scale. So first demonstrating that those systems all work in an integrated sense. Then we move towards full deuterium-tritium operations. This is the fueled portion of the eater uh, operations. And at that point, that's when we'll be able to demonstrate a self-sustained plasma or a burning plasma. And that will be in the mid-2030s.